پاکستان ویلکم بیک ٹو دی ماڈیول آن کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو بی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ سم تھنگ ویری امپورٹنٹ اینڈ دیٹ از کریڈیٹرز اینڈ کارپوریٹ گورننس سو اگین اینی بزنس وچ از ٹیکنگ پلیس ریکوائرز کریڈیٹرز بیکاز ڈیفینیٹلی دی ایکوٹی اور دی اماؤنٹ وچ اینی انویسٹر ہیز اور اینی آرگنائزیشن ہیز دیٹ از آلویز لمیٹیڈ بٹ دی کریڈیٹرز وچ آر دی ڈفرینٹ فائنینشیل انسٹیٹیوشنز دے ہیو امینس اینڈ واس سمز آف money with them because of their depositors and therefore they have to invest somewhere. But however, when we are talking about corporate governance, it is also very essential that these uh, creditors have uh, their uh, amounts safeguarded and also their interests safeguarded because they are giving huge amounts uh, to the organization and they would expect a certain return on it. And therefore, the role of the creditor and corporate governance is hand in glove together and is a very, very important aspect of corporate governance. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about the critical nexus between banks and firms, uh, not only for financing, but also for efficiency and ultimate survival, it has never been uh, underemphasized. So again, uh, we don't only talk about financing, but we are also talking about making the systems more efficient, whereby the organizations uh, can generate uh, more profits, and it would enable them to pay back with, with profit to the uh, financiers to the creditors and secondly also that it has to be sustainable and survive whereby the creditors in the long term can recover the amounts which have been given to them. Banks and other creditors have an extremely important role to play in fostering efficiency in the medium and large private or state-owned organizations. So again, especially in the context of large and medium size enterprises, the role of the creditor and of the different financial institutions is very important. And why so? Because if proper processes and systems uh, are not being practiced, if, they are not, if, they are the, if the SOPs, the standard operating procedures are not manualized in the right way, then there would always be a very high possibility whereby the organization can default on a loan or can even go towards bankruptcy. And therefore, the creditors have a very, very important concern and a very important stake within the organization. And therefore, practicing corporate governance in its true essence becomes critical uh, for organizations to survive and to move forward uh, in a better way. Uh, when we look at the creditors, then uh, creditors in turn rely for their survival on debt repayment by their borrowers and strong creditors are as critical to the efficient functioning of enterprises as are strong owners. So again, on one side we see that the investment which has come in has come in from the investors, from the shareholders. And on the other end, what we see are the creditors. Now, uh, what we see, I mean, when we had the Brazil uh, debacle, uh, we see how uh, Brazil uh, as, a, as a nation also defaulted on international obligations and their banks uh, collapsed due to uh, a collapse in the, uh, in the, in the land uh, sector, uh, whereby the property drastically fell and thereby uh, many uh, large organizations could not fulfill their obligations to the creditors and to the financiers. Similarly, we also see in Asia, we see the meltdown which took place uh, in the early 2000s uh, and then again uh, we see uh, how the financial markets also collapsed and all of this uh, is affecting the financial institutions which in turn uh, affect the whole economy. So therefore, it's critically important that efficient functioning of enterprises uh, happens with strong owners and strong financiers and creditors. Now, this requires adequate information. Lenders need information on the credit worthiness. Uh, inadequate financial and cost accounting can hide the true value of the firm's assets. So what we see is, is that in the context of transparency, there is window dressing or there is deficient accounting system. Both are detrimental to the organization. The organization has to ensure that there is no window dressing, that there is no dual accounting, that everything is overboard and remains within the ambit of law and accounting principles and most importantly they have to ensure that everything is evaluated in the right way and all the systems and all the frameworks of accounting are followed uh, in absolute terms and there should be no deviation from that. And then again uh, a very important thing is, is that they cannot hide uh, their assets also so there has to be a complete disclosure by the organizations so that uh, it can facilitate the creditors, the financiers and also the primary stakeholder, which is the shareholder.
uh, dramatic changes in the structure of input prices, uh, demand, competition, uh, distribution channels reduce the value of prior information. When information asymmetries are significant, adverse selection may make it costly. So, again, we have to harmonize, we have to systemize, and we have to ensure that all accounting and financial protocols are followed by the organization and they must be done dot to dot and they must be done precisely 100 percent so that there is no ambiguity. And secondly, all of the stakeholders can get a fair picture of what is happening within the organization and especially the creditors, they must be aware because they would have given large sums of money, uh, which, are, which are actually relative, but large sums of money to that particular organization and therefore, uh, it is justified that they should have correct and truthful information regarding the different uh, issues of finance and accounting. When we talk about creditor investing, then the existence of appropriate market-based incentives for creditors, be the banks, creditors or the government, these incentives may be in the form of higher margin of profit, higher interest charges from customers and sometimes even reduction in quantum of non-performing assets. So, this is very, very important that we should be able to understand that when a creditor is pouring in money, then they are concerned uh, with these uh, different aspects of finance and accounting. And again, uh, how is it that they are going to be motivated or they are going to be incentivized uh, to further invest in the organization is through high profit margins, is a high interest uh, charges from customers and also the fact that organizations reduce the non-performing assets because uh, they are not uh, active uh, in generating revenue and it is better that they can be uh, sidelined or uh, they can al also be disposed of to create a better uh, picture, financial picture of that particular organization. A high growth achieved after consolidating the current business in an intensely competitive environment may by itself act as an incentive. So, uh, very clearly st uh, stipulated and also mentioned earlier that if we have a high growth rate, if the organization is expanding, then definitely it is a huge incentive for creditors to join in and they would be willing to provide uh, funds uh, for further expansion and further growth. So, it is basically uh, a win-win situation which is created and hand in glove uh, whereby the creditors and the organization can grow better together and that is an extremely important aspect. Uh, we also talk about uh, in this chapter debt collection. Without an effective system of debt collection, debtors lose repayment discipline. Uh, in informal credit markets, the effectiveness of debt collection depends on the non-legal or the extra-legal sanctions. So, again, whatever frameworks uh, that are available, whatever laws that are available, they are extremely important in the context of data collection. It is very important that the organization itself has a proper data collection uh, department which can engage uh, with uh, the different organizations and ensure that they receive timely payments and also identify areas of weakness which can be supplemented by that particular organization. Now, when we are talking about informal credit markets, uh, then uh, debt collection depends upon the non-legal or the extra legal sanctions and that basically means that in the informal market system, it becomes a little bit difficult to legally regulate because they have their own systems like in Faisalabad, they have the purchase system in which that purchase is going from one person to the other person, but that is more reliable and more trusty than even a bank pay order because uh, that trust has been established over decades and they have their own accounting mechanism which is informal but is also very effective and that is something uh, very important to comprehend and to understand that how these informal markets actually are able to uh, be uh, more trusted and more relied upon than the formal uh, banking. And therefore, there is a great need for the uh, banking industry and for the banking sector to come up and meet the needs of uh, different organizations uh, so that uh, they, can, uh, they can pulverize more money into those organizations and in return uh, get higher returns and also uh, a uh, guarantee, an implied guarantee that those amounts are going to be returned. Now, when we talk about credit mo monitoring, then formal credit markets depend more on legal procedures involving collateral, workouts, credit mandated reorganization of the debtor firm and bankruptcy. So, when we talk about credit monitoring, then we are talking about collateral, workouts, credit mandated reorganization of the debtor firm and bankruptcy. So, 
all of these are the very important elements related to cor uh, to corporate uh, uh, monitoring and uh, the organization should be monitoring all of these proxies so that it does not go into a rollover um, debt diffusion is another very important topic and debt purchases provide finance in the return for a more pro promised stream of payments if the corporation violates these covenants or defaults on the payments then debt holders uh, typically uh, obtain the rights to repossess the collateral so uh, what we see over here is is that uh, it becomes very important that uh, the the debt purchases uh, are regulating and streamlining uh, the different payments and most importantly that if uh, the covenants uh, or the agreement uh, is violated or there is a default of payments then the debt holders typically should be able to uh, repossess that particular collateral but if they cannot repossess that particular collateral then that would mean uh, that they have a very loose control and uh, the uh, debtor would not be willing to give back uh, the money uh, to the uh, creditor so uh, it's it's a it's a very fine line and again uh, a lot of dependency upon trust and credit worthiness is extremely important so that is why all of those things are uh, assessed in a better way uh, both uh, in the context of uh, different frameworks and also scientifically now now uh, corporations are uh, thrown into bankruptcy proceedings so if they are not properly regulated then an or or corporation or organization can also file for bankruptcy creditors do not need to coordinate to take action against a delinquent firm so it's not necessary that a consortium is formed it's not necessary that an association is formed one individual creditor can also move and uh, uh, and also uh, legally uh, fight for their rights clearly the effective exertion of corporate control with diffused debt depends upon the efficiency of the legal and the bankruptcy system so again what we have to see is is that uh, is the legal system uh, that astute at right and receptive to all of these claims or will they favor uh, the uh, the uh, debtor or will they favor the creditor and secondly what we see is is that there has to be an efficient uh, legal system and a bankruptcy system so that uh, all the legal uh, creditors can be given their amounts uh, on a pro rata basis and also on the basis of first or second or third right so all of these things are very important that they should be drafted in the right way they should be assimilated in the right way and then they should be registered also on the right uh, platforms and forums so that there is no ambiguity uh, at the end of the day uh, a bank's corporate governance power derives uh, from the following its legal rights in case the firm's default or violate covenant uh, short maturity of its loans uh, so that corporations must return regularly its frequent dual role as the voter of substantial equity shares so again many a times it is seen that the uh, major creditor also gets a position uh, in the board and therefore then uh, has direct influence uh, at a strategic level with the corporation so this is extremely important and we have to see uh, that all of these systems and processes are formulated in the right way concentrated debt holders can also renegotiate the terms of the loan which may avoid inefficient bankruptcy so this is extremely important that sometimes uh, there are too many bankruptcies taking place and then it creates a domino effect or it creates a ripple effect whereby it affects the whole economy and the whole sector also and that should be avoided at all costs because otherwise uh, the system can collapse so it's important to understand that in various cases renegotiation can also take place which would avoid inefficient uh, bankruptcies and that is a very important aspect uh, of this uh, whole system and this whole framework nevertheless large creditors face important constraints to exerting sound corporate governance uh, in many countries so, and that has been uh, stated earlier that corporate governance uh, being practiced in its true essence is very limited and therefore there is a great need to ensure uh, that such an environment is created such opportunities are created such resources are made available whereby uh, bankruptcies do not take place and that that is extremely uh, tricky context and uh, we have to ensure uh, that the whole system uh, is calibrated uh, in such a way that it tends to facilitate the creditor and the debtor does not take undue advantage by creating uh, ambiguity or by denying uh, certain facts so this is very important and then to ensure uh, that even if uh, an organization has to go bankrupt that also must be done according to a particular system uh, uh, a particular uh, stepwise approach and also the fact that no directors uh, no debtors uh, or uh, no creditors um, 
fundamental rights or uh, their amount which they have to uh, extricate from that particular organization should be compromised in any way. Thank you so much.